Hello everyone, welcome to this week's service. Uh, this Sunday is uh, the Transfiguration of Jesus. We're going to hear read to us the story of Jesus on the mountain appearing with uh, Moses and Elijah, a story from Mark chapter 9 a bit later in the service. It's also a communion Sunday, so if you've got some elements that you can consume at the appropriate moments, some bread, wine or bread and juice, perhaps you might like to get those prepared for that part of the service a little bit later on. So I'm going to uh, open with prayer. I'm going to pray the uh, set prayer for this Sunday, uh, which refers to the gospel reading, and then offer this time to God uh, that he would come and meet with us by his spirit as we worship this morning. Let us pray. Father in heaven, whose son Jesus Christ was once wonderfully transfigured before the chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross, that in the world to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Father, we commit to you this time of worship this morning. Enable us in this online service to lift our voice in praise, to hear and receive your word, and to add our amen to the prayers that are offered this morning. So, Father, we ask by your Spirit, enable us in this time. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
The epistle reading taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 to 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain, where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could have bleached them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the, from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength, Redeemer and Friend. Where in our daily life do we find awe and wonder, I suppose? On a clear night, perhaps, looking up at the stars? That has much to offer, doesn't it, I think? Or perhaps on the television when we see the undersea world that sometimes is on, on view to us. Some of those nature programmes. Things seen and experienced that are sudden, never seen before, arresting, a revelation. Well, Peter and his companions experienced something far more arresting and marvellous. Elijah and Moses appear to them. They join in conversation with Jesus on the mountain. All is white, blazing. Very arresting indeed. And of course, Peter and his friends know who they are. And poor Peter is overcome completely. And I think we can all understand that, can't we? That he would be overcome. He is confused. He's so confused that he makes, on impulse, a very strange impulse, he decides to make some shelters, build some buildings. The idea of doing something, I think. The Gospel tells us that they were frightened and afraid. They were terrified. And we can all, I think, relate to that as well. And why wouldn't they be? Jesus had led them to a new place. They are confronted by the new kingdom. It introduces them to a new view, a confirmation, in fact, of him. Jesus, Jesus is speaking and is doing the truth. It is the sign that is he indeed the true prophet, the new Messiah. Verse 7 speaks directly to the three disciples. And aren't we disciples too? So they speak to us as well. This is my son, 
the beloved. Listen to him. As God speaks directly to Peter, James and John, he speaks directly, of course, to you and to me. But as we hear in the reading in from Corinthians, set for this day as well, there are those who choose to reject Jesus and all his teachings, aren't there? His message is unheard and indeed, sometimes, in some cases, actively rejected. And that rejection lives with us still, doesn't it? It's still there. We only need to look around to see confusion and misunderstanding. The world can be a very dark place. So, where do we place ourselves? Where are we in the narrative of Mark? Hmm? Are we able to see ourselves there? Do we see ourselves on the mountain? Are we on the mountain too, together? Do you know that you are on the mountain? And do you think that it is the right place to be? And if we are on the mountain, what happens next? We come down from the mountain, do we? Into a different world. We come down to the world as it is now. Now, Jesus asked for silence. He asked Peter and the others to be silent until he has risen. And of course, he has risen. So the time has come to honour him in both word and deed. There needs to be no confusion. There should be no misunderstanding. The time is now. Paul tells us not to proclaim ourselves, but to proclaim Jesus. Let light shine out of darkness. We are all living in a strange and difficult time. Much of what we take for granted is now constrained, and there is pain, loss and parting. It is hard, very hard. We are called to listen and act and keep strong. The road ahead is uncharted, but the road ahead we walk together, don't we? We do it all together. We have decided that we face it together as one. And we are not alone, of course. Whatever comes next, he, the Lord, walks with us too, doesn't he? The Gospel tells us that Peter did not know what to say. He was lost for words, wasn't he? Well, each of us is called to listen. And in listening, we shall then be given the voice that we need. We need to listen so that we then may speak. A prayer to finish. Dear Lord, we ask for wisdom. We ask for wisdom, Lord, to listen to your word. We ask for courage. We ask for courage, Lord, to use our voice to speak your word. We ask for strength. We ask for strength, Lord, to follow your word. And as we walk together as one with Peter, James and John and all your faithful people, give us peace in our hearts and perfect love in all our lives. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, your word says we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Therefore, having this assurance, let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for bringing us together in this strange and sometimes scary virtual world. We thank you for the technology that makes it possible. 
and for the skills and talents of those who know how to use it. Gracious God, as we remember before you the millions who have died of COVID-19 worldwide, surround us and all who mourn with your strong compassion. Be gentle with us in our grief, protect us from despair, and give us grace to persevere and face the future with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this week when we have seen a military coup in Myanmar, demonstrations on the streets in Russia, and America riven with political posturing and infighting, let sense prevail and let your teaching of grace and truth prevail. We pray for those affected by a natural disaster, the dam collapse in the Rishinganga power plant in India, and while remembering the power of nature, ask your protection for the hundreds locating, digging and reviving survivors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember today those here in Woburn and in our wider benefice who are just finding it difficult to cope. We remember parents homeschooling young families, students who should be on their campuses, those who have lost their jobs or are furloughed with the threat of redundancy hanging over them and isolated elderly people who are feeling lonely and cut off. Bring them peace, lift their hearts, and let us all remember that you have a plan for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today let us pray especially for local families who However hard they try, just don't have enough money to feed themselves. We thank you for the work of MK Food Bank, those who donate, the centres that collect, and all the volunteers who receive, pack and deliver the food. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. While it is in our human nature to worry and complain, do not let us forget that we, what we have as well as what we don't have. And foremost among these things, your love and forgiveness, paid for by Jesus Christ our Saviour. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. My Jesus, I know that you are present by your Holy Spirit. I love you above all and I desire to receive you into my soul afresh this day. Since I cannot at this moment receive Holy Communion in the physical presence of my church family, come spiritually to my heart as I eat this bread and drink this cup, remembering all Jesus did for us through the cross. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, confident of your promise to be present with me always. Amen. So we come to the Holy Communion. If you have elements uh, available at home, at the end of this prayer there will be a prayer that appears on the screen and at that point you can receive the elements that you have available at home. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by the offering of himself a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his Holy Gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed of bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and endeavour. Amen. So now let's draw this service to a close with a prayer and a blessing. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of the Holy Trinity. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now a blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Take care, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next week. Keep safe, try to keep warm, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.